Hi, this is Jan with Jan's Jewelry Supplies. Thanks for watching another one of our jewelry making videos. Today we're going to be etching some brass bracelet blanks. First I'm going to be showing you some of the things that you can use to create the relief in your designs and the, when I say relief that's the area that is not actually being etched. Uh, you can use rubber stamps with stays on ink. Uh, Sharpies in this piece I used a stamp and I dotted the rest of the area with the Sharpie pen. With this piece I used some shaped stickers that I found at the dollar store. Uh, I found a variety of stickers from animals to stars and flowers, uh, some sea life, uh, if you look around you should be able to find a variety of stickers that you can use and with these stickers they just have an adhesive back you just peel the backs off of them and stick them onto your piece where you want your re relief. You can also use masking tape if you want to mask off your pieces you could get some thin tape and do some lines I'm just going to give you an example uh, just going to lay some masking tape down just kind of give you some geometric shapes I've just laid down some pieces of masking tape and where you see the brass that is where your piece will be etched when you lay it in a solution we have a variety of these uh, flat bracelet blanks. We have them in the two inch, the one and a half inch, and the one and the eighth inch. Uh, the two that I've used are the one and the eighth and the two inch cuff. I'm going to show you a couple of different things that you can use to etch your pieces. Ferric chloride is one of them. The ferric chloride is a bit pricey this small bottle it's about fifteen dollars and some pieces can take about half a bottle to uh, etch um, it just it depends on the piece of course you can do several pieces at one time if you have room for it if you've got a curved bracelet uh, you will probably need a deep cup and the wider the cup is the more solution you're going to use uh, I prefer to use the muriatic acid. Muriatic acid can be found at most hardware stores. Uh, you can use it to remove rust, lower the pH in pools, clean brick, uh, etch concrete, and you just use it with hydrogen peroxide. Uh, and, and hydrogen peroxide is really cheap and we're doing a 3 to 1 ratio uh, with the 3 being the hydrogen peroxide. Uh, no matter which one you use, you need to make sure that you are recycling it. You cannot pour this stuff down your drain or dump it in your trash can. Uh, pouring it down your drains, you're going to ruin your drains. Uh, if you um, put it in the trash can, it is going to go into the soil and it can poison our water. If you contact uh, your household hazardous waste facility, you can find out how you can recycle that. I tend to just keep pouring it in a bucket and, until I get enough accumulated and then I will take it down to have it recycled. Before I start adding my design to a piece, I go ahead and mask the back side the area that I don't want etched. Uh, if this is being etched from both sides, your piece will start to become very thin. So I make sure I have uh, tape pushed down pretty firmly on the back side and uh, any excess tape that I have. I will tear off on one side and then on the other side I will kind of make a little tab so that I can uh, easily lift it out of the uh, etching solution. For this piece I'm going to use a rubber stamp with stays on ink and a sharpie. I generally just eyeball it uh, unless I'm doing an intricate design then I may uh, use some tape 
to mark uh, exact areas and then remove the tape before I etch but um, this doesn't have to be exact and when I stamped this center piece uh, I didn't get it completely stamped so I am going to use some fingernail polish remover or acetone uh, to remove uh, the stamp uh, you can also use alcohol. I'm just going to use uh, a little bit of this on a cloth or a paper towel actually to remove it. And I want to make sure I get all of it off there because if I don't then the remaining may uh, also etch where I don't want it to went ahead and grabbed a ruler while I got the acetone and I'm going to go ahead and lay it up against the bracelet so I have a better idea where the exact center of the bracelet is. I just want to get this one in the very center of the bracelet. Now I'm going to put two down at the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and put this away so it doesn't dry out. And I'm going to come back in with a Sharpie and just do a little spiral piece. And these are fine point Sharpies. Uh, if you're doing really small work, you might want the ultra fine. Now that I have my design the way that I want it, I'm going to get a little tub to put my piece in. Little sandwich containers is what I'm using. Uh, it will not fit in there going across, so I'm going to have to put it in diagonal. But that gives it plenty of room without having to put too much solution in. I've got some cups here. One's marked at three quarters of a cup. That is going to be my hydrogen peroxide. And I have another cup that is marked at a quarter cup. And that is going to be my muriatic acid. So I'm going to go ahead and pour my hydrogen peroxide. Once I start using the muriatic acid, I will want to use gloves and it would be a good idea to wear goggles as well. I do wear glasses so my eyes are pretty well protected. But this will burn your skin and it definitely will burn your eyes so do protect your eyes and your skin. I'm going to go ahead and pour the muriatic acid in. And I'm just going to lay my piece in bottom with the uh, tape on the bottom. 
and my little lip on the side so I can easily pick it out and this generally takes about 25 minutes um, I haven't tried it but you could probably apply heat and get it to go quicker I have used uh, the uh, peroxide that you use to color hair and it goes a whole lot faster but it the liquid gets really hot and it starts boiling and it's scary I'm not in that big of a hurry uh, and don't really want to handle something like that so I just use the regular peroxide and set my alarm for 25 minutes and come back and generally it's ready uh, I think the ferric chloride takes a little less time but by using the murat muratic acid I am a saving a lot of money and you can see as it sits there that it's starting to uh, the water starting to turn a bluish color uh, I believe that's the copper and the brass uh, that is turning it color it's just the reaction to the metal uh, before you pull your piece out of uh, the acid mixture you want to have a bath of water and baking soda uh, the reason for that is that it will neutra neutralize your piece and I'm just using some rubber tongs to lift it a little bit and uh, grabbing the tape I'm just going to set it down and in the uh, water and baking soda and you really don't need to set it there long just set it there for 30 seconds or so to let it neutralize and then I have a bucket that I will discard the acid solution into and again make sure to recycle okay uh, I've had this sitting in the baking soda and water for just a minute and uh, I'm going to wipe it off, I'm going to dry it off I'm going to peel the tape off the back and uh, I am going to use some some more acetone to clean off the marks and also sometimes there will be some adhesive left from your masking tape and or your stickers if you use stickers so I want to clean off all the inks and adhesive that there may be left there's also some adhesive on the back You can see the design a little bit, but it'll come out even more when you use a patina. You may be able to see a little bit of lines where some of it seeped through. Uh, and that's pretty normal. Sometimes just right around the edges you'll see a little bit where the acid has come through just a little bit. The main thing is to protect uh, the piece as best that you can so it doesn't end up being really, really thin. It's going to take a little bit of steel wool and go over the piece just to make sure that it's uh, clean and smooth. I'm going to do the front and the back. Once I've gone over this with the steel wool, I'm going to clean up my workspace and wipe this off with some alcohol. And then before I add a patina, I want to go ahead and shape the bracelet. You can use a mandrel to shape the bracelet or you can um, bend it with your hands and then do the last little bit with a mandrel or you can actually just use a rolling pin. 
most of the shape you can easily do by hand except for the very tips of it you need to tap down a little bit um, for the ends I actually use a rubber mallet but if you don't have a rubber mallet you can take a regular hammer and just uh, I actually have taken a sock and wrapped it around the end of it and taken a rubber band to attach it to the hammer and you just need uh, to have a little bit of protection a little soft area to where you're not marring the metal see here's this is a mandrel but I'm going to show you on the rolling pin not quite as easy because the rolling pin does move but I'm just going to take this rubber end of this mallet and tap this end down where I get that little curve around the center the center of the back that is I'm just going to turn it around and do the other side I'm going to bend it around the rolling pin a little bit and then just tap it down Now that I have my cuff shaped, I am going to add a patina. There's a number of different kinds of patinas on the market. Uh, the one that I'm using is the Swelligence Darkening Patina. They do have a variety of colors. They've got a blue, a purple, a green. Um, but uh, I like the darkening patina, so that's what I'm going to be using. Some people will actually dip their items in a patina. To me, that's just a, a waste of the patina and I'm just going to put a little tiny bit in a cup I can always add more if I need more and I will just dab it on with a brush and I don't put my brush down in the bottle because I'm always afraid I will contaminate the rest of the patina so I just take out a little bit as I need it and this should be plenty to do this bracelet and a lot of times when you're dabbing it on it is going to roll a little bit and you just want to dry it up where it rolled and just keep dabbing it on when you're finished with the patina the bracelet should be a really really dark brown almost black kept on the outside of the bracelet uh, if you have any bare spots you want to go back and add a little more patina to where it's a basically a solid color then I'm gonna go and do the inside of the bracelet as well now that I have the piece completely covered with the patina I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry if you set it down and it's sitting in a pool of patina the edges are going to be wet so you want to set it make sure it if it drips that you set it in a, on a dry surface I let this set for about 30 minutes and it was still slightly damp so I came back and used a blow dryer to dry it out completely if you rub your fingers across it and any dampness comes off of it onto your hands then you're going to want to go ahead and dry it some more either let it set longer or come in with a dryer to make it completely dry I'm going to go ahead and use some steel wool on this to take the patina off of the very top surface and to do this I'm going to use a mask because there's going to be a lot of particles flying and you really don't, do not want to be breathing those particles and your hands will get nasty with this as well so you might want to wear gloves you can see the design is starting to show through
and you can remove as much of the patina as much or as little as you want uh, some people will bring it back to a pretty shiny surface some will keep it really really dark um, I like to leave a lot of the patina on there quite a bit of the patina on to give it that antique look So you just keep removing the patina until you get it to the uh, color that you like. So I have this at about the coloring that I like. It's still pretty dark, but uh, you can see all of the design. You can come in and add a clear coat to your piece. And that will protect the patina. And uh, Swellagent does also have a clear coat. Uh, I generally do not add a clear coat because I figure uh, if it starts to wear down I can add more patina and that becomes a little more difficult you would have to strip the pat uh, you would have to strip the clear coat off to do that well that's it for this video thanks for watching we'll see you next time and I would like to take this opportunity to say one more time please do not pour these chemicals down your sink make sure you dispose of them properly. Uh, there are uh, household hazardous waste facilities that you can take the chemicals to. You don't have to run up there every time you use it. Just keep a big bucket and pour the stuff in there and when you get enough to dispose of, uh, take it up to them and they will recycle it properly.